God is at work in you and in your children, and he's working to bring about his purposes in your life and in your kids' lives. Welcome to Hope Today. I'm Anna, and I'm here with Tom and Amy. And Amy, we've got a great topic today. We do. Are you concerned about the culture and your children and your children being raised up in this culture? Well, our guest today, Daniel Darling, has written a book called The Biggest Best Light. It is a children's book that is addressing cultural issues that we're dealing with right now. I believe today, just like a child, if we'll come with faith like a child, we can all learn and grow through some really tough things that are happening. Yeah. You know, I, one of my favorite things to do when, uh, when the kids were growing up was to read them books that you get out of the library. But when there's a, a, you know, sometimes there's something behind them that isn't exactly godly, but with what Daniel's doing, I mean, to bring out the, the, the truths of, of what, you know, what's going on in the world and the truths of the scriptures through a kid's book, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this book is, talking about the light, right? Jesus is the light, God is the light, and we see darkness getting darker in our world, and yet the light will get lighter and brighter as we let God shine through us and through our children. And just what a wonderful privilege, opportunity that we have as parents, as grandparents, to teach our kids about the truths of God, the light of scripture, so that when they hit that dark time or when there's confusing things being told to them, that they will know what the truth is and walk in that freedom in that fullness of all that God has for them. You got something. So we're, we were talking a little bit before the show about the Asbury revival and the things that are happening. Yeah. What does it look like to you if the parents get revived? How does that affect the kids? It probably depends on whether they're teenagers or not. But I know I when my daughter, when she was 12 years old, she joined a group that went out and uh, they had a young people's group that went out and was sharing the gospel. I was it was like the greatest thing ever. But what do you think, Amy? I was just studying about children and parenting because I'm teaching a leadership group. And one of the things that teachers will say, that people will say, let me talk to the kids, watch the kids, and I'll tell you exactly what's happening with the parents and in their home. Wow. And it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, there's a, there's a real weightiness and responsibility that these are not just our children. They're God's children. God has a purpose and a plan for them. And we have a responsibility to model, you know, a follower of Christ, to model a person that's on fire for God. Um, there's a great scripture. I can't remember where it's from, but it says, as the mother goes, so goes the daughter. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. so if the mom is fired up for the Lord, so the daughter gets fired up for the Lord too. Mm. So, I mean, <laughs> There's a move of God happening with the young people right now, and it I is. could not be more thrilled. And I'm believing that my generation, too, jumps in the revival and that all generations are locking arm in arm together, seeing heaven on earth. Right. Yeah, I mean, the word says that in the last days, God will pour his spirit out on our sons and daughters. And aren't we seeing that happen right now? And sometimes in the church, we can get we we're like cynical or we're discouraged right. and we feel like where is god where is this revival and yet we're seeing it happen in our sons and daughters i've been seeing it in my own yes. children i've been seeing it in my friends children yes. i've been seeing it at my church where they have a revival night and they try to they try to end it like um, say around 11 o'clock. Well, this one that just happened went till 3.30 in the morning because wow. the young awesome. people just kept going. They're so hungry for the Lord, so hungry for the truth. Love and it. mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, yes. this is our, our time to step up and be the leaders, yeah. be the examples of Christ. Yeah, I love it too. And I love that when all the generations are uh, you know, seeking the Lord and, and strongly seeking after him. And in, in, in that vein, I want to mention, uh, again, this is uh, the beginning of Lent. I don't know if your church celebrates Lent. I grew up in a church that didn't really uh, celebrate Lent, but I know a lot of our Catholic friends do. And 
let's see, Catholics, Methodists, uh, Lutherans maybe, pres I don't, I'm not sure who all, but I know that it is, a, it is a time to seek God. It is a time for those things to get, to draw close to God. It's not just about giving up something. It's about drawing co close to God and an important thing for us all to remember and to do. Right now, we're gonna do something a little bit fun. We haven't done one for about a week now. We're gonna do Stump the Host. Oh my. All right, here we go. <laughs> Questions that we have not seen, so play along with us. And uh, this first one's going to throw me here. How yeah. many judges were there? Wow. Yeah, I'm already Like stumped. in the whole Bible? Yeah, in the book of Judges, I guess. Oh, in the book of Judges. That's I mean, it I doesn't say think. that specifically. I'm tempted to say nine. No, I just... I know, I was just going to pick like an even uh, ten. How many judges no, were there? No, there was, oh. Man. Oh my gosh. This I do not know. I do not know this number. Not you got it, you're get, getting us guess. here. A hundred. Uh, uh, ooh. Seems like a lot. There were a lot of judges. I'm in Lamentations four. right now. Uh, I am uh, grueling <laughs> through Lamentations. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, there were a lot of judges. Uh, uh, I think that's too high. You Come do? on now. I was thinking 40 maybe. I don't know. Pick why don't I don't we take a best guess? I'm, I'm 40, going with 40. I'm going okay. with 40. 12. Oh, oh. Okay, oh, so good judges. Okay. Just turn off the lights. I mean, Deborah turn, sat we're, under the we're tree horrible. and judge. I mean, Forget, we don't know anything. Okay. We need a uh, clarity on that question. I said 10. I was the closest. We did. Oh. <laughs> but it didn't anyway. say it was just in the book of Judges. All right. All right. Well, okay. moving right we along. Okay, Hopefully they'll go. forget. Hopefully. <laughs> I can forgive. Okay, how many stone jars of water did Jesus turn into wine? Oh my gosh. What is this, the accounting show? <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. What are we doing I, here? Numbers are not, uh, I was not good at math. Is it, I know I'm allergic you know, to math. <laughs> I'm gonna say 12, I think it was 12. You think it was 12? Is that too many? We're, we're like, Seven is like a holy number. Oh, you know what? We'll go with you. You were closer than everyone else. I don't even want to else. guess. I'm we'll say really seven. Far off. Oh. Six. 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 Oh, this is still close. In John 2, it's not horseshoes, 1 through 11. Okay? <laughs> All right, here's the last question. Come on, we got to get oh, one right man. here. What were the last words of Jesus on the cross according to the Gospel of John? Oh, was it? It is it finished. It is finished. Tetelestai. Well, I think or it, today I, you'll be with me in eternity. It, it depends on what was in John. In that's, John. That's, the, that's the issue here. Um, I, but I, I think we can't go wrong with it is, it is finished. finished. You want to go with I that? Commit, yeah, yes. it is finished. Yay! Yes, thank you. Well, thank okay. Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we saved it. We saved <laughs> it. People aren't changing the channel over there. So thank you. <laughs> Time to get back into culture. In today's culture, our children are constantly being bombarded with all types of messages. From the classroom to television, we may not always be able to control what they hear, but we can do our part to teach them about how much Jesus loves them. Pastor and author Daniel Darling is our next guest, and in his new children's book, The Biggest Best Light, he encourages parents to initiate meaningful conversations with their children about sin, the sanctity of life, equality, and our purpose as God's light bearers. I love that. Daniel, welcome to Hope Today. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm so glad to be here and uh, glad to talk about um, the gospel and about uh, children and, and what it means to be made in the image of God. I love some of these cultural issues that you're addressing for children. But the title of this book, The Biggest, Best Light, it's like good, better, best. Where did that come from? Where did this message and heart for this book come from? Well, you know, I, uh, me and my co-author, uh, Brianna uh, Stenzard, we, we've been speaking and talking about sanctity of human life issues for a long time. And uh, I wrote a book for adults on human dignity. What, what does it mean to be made in the image of God? And what does that mean for the way that we um, think about ourselves and, and think about our neighbors? And uh, we wanted a way for, for parents to be able to talk about this very important issue with their children. You know, we, we believe uh, 
Christianity has such a rich vision of what it means to be human, that we are made in the image of God, that humans are God's special creation. Um, and that, uh, that means that every human being has dignity and worth. So that has a lot of um, implications for the way that we think about ourselves, but also way, the way we think about our neighbors. Mm-hmm. And, and so this really walks children through uh, what, it, what does that mean? How does that mean for the way that we see uh, people around us? Uh, why do people treat, mistreat each other? And we talk about the entrance of sin into the world, and we talk about the fact that Jesus has redeemed us from that and can restore us to, um, to being the light bearers that he, he called us to be. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe that even as adults, we can learn a lot if we would just come and have the faith like a child. Can you break down just a little bit um, the message of just equality and and what did you say? Human dignity in this book. As mm-hmm. you turn the pages in this book, there are all kinds of cultures, ethnic backgrounds, people, styles, different. Can you break down the heart behind this message? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the Bible has a, a really, you know, I think a unique perspective on, you know, what it means to be human. I, I think a lot of people are asking that question today with with so many different uh, things in the culture that are demanding that we we think through that, uh, whether it's uh, things like abortion or things like, you know, um, what does it mean to be male and female? Uh, wh- how do we think about immigration and immigrants and, and people of other cultures? And the Bible says that every human being uh, uh, has equality before God, that every human being uh, is made in the image of God, is crafted by God from the dust of the ground, it says in, in Genesis. In Psalm 139, King David says that uh, I was knit together in my mother's womb. Uh, there's such care and deliberation, uh, the Bible talks about, in the creation of human beings. And th- there's no uh, disposable people, there's no random people, that everyone uh, is made in God's image. That means that um, the way that I think about myself is that I'm not just here. You know, there's no there's no child uh, that is just kind of randomly here, uh, but that God has a purpose and a plan for every every human being. Um, and it also means that the way I see my neighbors, that, that people around me, whether it's kids at school or kids in the neighborhood, people that might look differently than me, they also were made in the image of God. Uh, and so it's two things. It's, it's, if, if God, if I'm an image bearer of God, that means uh, I have a responsibility to obey God and to live as, uh, according to the way that he, he – um, has has uh, created for us to live, but it also means that I need to look out for my neighbors. Daniel, a, a lot of people, when they hear the word theology, you know, they want to run in the other direction or doctrine. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't feel yeah. qualified. Um, how does this, uh, you know, what you're sharing with us and how do what you share in the book, how does that help parents with that that thorny kind of difficult problem of theology? Well, you know, theology is a big <clears throat> fancy word and uh, I teach at a, a seminary, and we love, we love theology, but really we shouldn't be scared of it. It's really uh, just uh, thoughts of the, the, what we think about God, and everybody, in many ways, everybody has a theology. Everybody has thoughts about God, and if <clears throat> to love God means to really try to know more about Him, it's about a relationship with Him. You know, I'm I've been married for 20 years. You know, if I said, "Well, I love my wife, but I don't really want to know anything about her," you would really question whether I loved her, right? And so I think it's the way that way about God. And um, I think this this idea of, of human dignity is important because it really impacts the way we live. And uh, kids today are bombarded with a lot of messages uh, about the world, about themselves. And for parents to be able to say, <clears throat> not only do you have dignity and worth because of <clears throat> the way that God made, because you're made in the image of God, <clears throat> and it doesn't matter how much you know, you offer the world or whether you're gifted or you're not gifted, or you're tall or you're skinny, um, whatever, you have dignity before God, you have worth. And it also helps parents to tell their kids, you know, those those kids in your school and in your neighborhood that are different than you, maybe even people you don't get along with very well, <clears throat> how should you treat them? How should you look at them? Do you look at them as, as people that, <clears throat> that sort of need to be avoided? Do you look at them as people that need to be you, you know, do you not see them in their full humanity? Um, and, and I think it's also important for, <clears throat> for parents to um, let their kids know why people are tempted to hurt, mistreat people. Why is there war? Why is there sickness? Why is there disease in the world? Why are things messed up? 
I think everyone recognizes that. We all see the news coming across our screens and everything. And the Bible says that's because sin came into the world and, and humans rejected God. But because of Jesus, um, um, so this is why in, in the book we talk about the dark parts of this world. Um, why do those exist? Well, that's because of sin. But Jesus came as the light. He's the light of the world. <clears throat> and he's reversed the curse. And he can rescue us from sin and darkness. So I think these are really important lessons to teach our kids early on so that when they go out into the world, when they go to school and they're in their neighborhood, they kind of know how to think and, and how to react. So Daniel, I, I agree with you. Like when children are young, they're such sponges and that's when they can best mm. receive this Absolutely. information. And parents have so much influence, especially at that young age. In your experience of sharing this message across the age groups, um, how are you seeing teenagers receive this message, even adults? Like, are you seeing that parents and grandparents are really grasping hold of this message to share? I really think they are. Um, I think parents, and especially Christian parents, but even parents that are not believers, are recognizing that um, our kids are going to be formed and shaped and discipled, whether we want them to or not. The question is, who is going to be shaping them and who's going to be forming them and who's going to be discipling, discipling them? And I think a lot of parents are saying, we have to be proactive. We can't just assume that our values and what we believe will just pass down by osmosis to our kids. They're being bombarded on all sides with messaging, whether they're on online, on social media, whether they're, even if you go to the store, you, you participate, you watch any kind of entertainment or whatever, you're being hit with a lot of different cultural messages. And, and many of them are not um, healthy and they're not what Christians believe. And so parents have to be proactive. We have to be intentional. Uh, we have to, we have to train our kids. Um, you know, this is all through the scripture, right? That, that God has told, you know, he told the people of Israel to pass this down from generation to generation, the story of God's faithfulness. Um, I think of Timothy in the New Testament. Paul said that you learn the scriptures from your grandmother and your mother. And so this is this is a job of parents that we we have the privilege and the duty to to really teach our kids and be intentional about this and not just assume they'll they'll pick it up other ways. I love the idea that you want to teach these children that you're a light bearer. I sat on a panel last night at a youth group and one of the questions is, what do we do with our friends that are not saved or our friends that are, you know, gay or our friends that are transgender and they're dealing with this in middle school and junior high and high school. But that idea of that Jesus is the light of the world and he lives in you. And no matter who you're with, you're the light bearer. So how do you really impart that message into kids where they don't have to fear darkness? They don't have to run from darkness, but mm -hmm. they actually carry the light to go into the darkness. That's such a great point. I mean, the Bible says that uh, the light has come into the world and the darkness has not overcome it. And, you know, we believe that Jesus is the light of the world. When we look around and see just a really messed up world, we see so many things that distress us. And we should lament that. We should be sad about that. But we also have hope that that God has come in Jesus. He's visited us. He's redeemed us from sin and death in the grave. He's reversed the curse. Um, and he is renewing and restoring the world. He's come back one day to finish that. And, and, and our kids, we need to give them that hope. Uh, and, and not only that, but that we are, we are messengers of the light. We're bearers of the light. And even our kids at a young age can go into these places like school and the neighborhoods and family and um, be, be a witness to the light of the world. Um, a lot of times people, you think about this Asbury revival, what's so inspiring about it is it's, it's young kids that are really fired up about the Lord, that that uh, love Jesus and love the gospel. And that can have a catalytic effect on the rest of the community when kids really grasp this and when they really care about these things and, and, and when they show the difference between uh, light and darkness in their own lives, I think it has a really impact on their, on their communities. Daniel, is this the time for us to be afraid of our kids and social media to be afraid of our kids and, you know, Google and be afraid of, is this the time to be afraid or is this the time to be confident that light overpowers darkness. And, and this might be our kids' finest hour. 
I think you're right. I think it is our finest hour. Look, the culture's really uh, bad in many ways. There's a lot of things that should make us nervous. We shouldn't be naive about that. But we are the people who um, we know the end of the story. We, we know that Christ is victorious over all things, that Christ is king over all. And we know that God uh, is working today, that Jesus saves today. Um, and what I like to tell Christians is that we we're made for this moment. And God has not made a mistake putting us in 2023. He's not up in heaven saying, man, I should have put him in 1950 or, or 2050 or whatever. This is the time and the moment God has called us to. And I think we have to seize that moment, live it out, live faithfully, and teach our kids that. That um, God is, it's, it's not an accident that he's, he's put you in, in, and had you be born into this, this time and space. And so giving our kids the confidence that God is going to go with them and, and before them. Daniel, can you take just a minute and can you pray for all of the parents that are watching right now? I mean, maybe some of them are almost paralyzed by fear. We hear so much in the news. Mm -hmm. There's so much happening around the world. Can you just pray for them that today their faith will be encouraged, that they'll just have a, a jolt of strength and uh, honestly courage to teach this to their children and their children's children? Absolutely. Dear Lord, we just thank you and praise you, first of all, for the gift of uh, parenting. And we thank you for that you have entrusted these um, children to our care. Lord, I want to pray a special prayer for all the parents out there who are watching, um, moms and dads that are working hard to raise their children, to put food on the table, to take them to school, to uh, teach them the Bible, to take them to church every week. Lord, that you would give them uh, a sense of, um, of hope uh, and confidence, even in the midst of sometimes really dark days and, and scary moments. Uh, Lord, I pray for this next generation, that you would raise up this next generation of children to really be a light in the world, uh, that we would see this revival spread around our country and around the world, that, that there will be people today that we will see in, the, in heaven who will be there because one of our children uh, took the time to share the good news of the gospel with them, to show by their lives what it means to be a Christian. And Lord, we know that you'll build their church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And we have confidence in that. So I pray, especially for parents, that you equip them and go with them in this important task. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Daniel, for this incredible book, The Biggest, Best Light. We are not afraid. We have courage. And this is our finest hour. We'll be right back for a time of ministry after this break. Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. What a great discussion we just had with Daniel Darling about our children and about just learning what it's like and how we can best share the, the truths of the gospel, the truths of the scriptures and of God with our children. And here's a great truth right from the very beginning. It's from Psalm 139, 13, and it says this, For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. And I, I love that. In fact, I, I, I want to share um, the very next yeah. verse. It says, I will give thanks to thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully, wonderfully made. made. Wonderful are thy yes. works and my soul knows it very well. Wow. So, you know, we can be confident that God has from our very, the very earliest moment, uh, been involved in our lives, you know? And, and guys, I think it's important for us to remember, Anna, that that we, God's involved all the time. He was involved right at the beginning. That's right. He's still involved 
even when sometimes we feel like he isn't. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just love how the word says that before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you and he set you apart for a grand purpose that was established for you before the beginning of time. So do you realize that all the gifts and talents that are in your children, that they were placed there by the Lord to be his light bearer in this world? The Lord's been just bringing this uh, truth of the word that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Like our words create life or they create death. And what a responsibility and privilege that we have as parents to be able to speak life into our kids, to tell them who they are, to tell them the truth, to be able to pull out all that God has put in them. Amy, it is such an awesome thing to be a parent. The whole world would change if kids knew how much Jesus loved them, they knew who they were in Christ. But what if parents, what if the adults knew, you know what, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. It's gonna be hard to give what you don't have. It's gonna be hard to teach love if you don't know you're loved yourself. So I would just say, take time. If you feel like you don't like yourself, you don't know how much Jesus loves you, you're questioning everything, you don't feel value, you don't feel worth, now's your time to stop, make the change, because nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, just read Psalm 139 every day, and you will see who you are, who God's called you to be, who you were created to be, and all of a sudden, you'll realize, I am beloved of God, and I am Anna Gooda be loved by him, and I'm gonna share that love with others. Yeah, I mean, God's will for you is to have you walk in the freedom and fullness of who he is. And so if there's any kind of like unforgiveness or bitterness or guilt or shame that the enemy is trying to keep you in bondage, today is your day to get free so that you can freely lead your children in all that they were created to be. Remember that they were born for such a time as this, and we do not need to be afraid for them. We need to know that God has put them here for this time to be powerful and strong and bring about his purposes in this earth. So we're so glad that you're with us today on Hope Today. Enjoy your day.